On the surface, it's another disturbing case of domestic homicide in Saskatchewan. But in court, it became apparent that John Strang is not only a murderer, but a deeply disturbed and dangerous individual. Yesterday, Strang pleaded guilty to shooting his wife, Lisa, to death two years ago. The CBC's Stephanie Langenegger has been in court covering this story. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Jill. A few details came out yesterday after Strang faced the judge and admitted he killed his wife. There were also some more revelations. One was the night of his confession. Tell us more about that. Well, we learned, Jill, that after he shot his wife, Lisa, in the village of McLean, he drove to the home of a woman he'd become obsessed with. He'd met Lynn Larson and her husband through a friend, and he had developed an erotic fixation on Lynn. She had no idea about this. He told her husband that he was dying of stomach cancer, which wasn't true, and that he wanted to camp on the couple's ranch that summer of 2015. That ranch is in East Central Saskatchewan. Now, Roland Larson didn't like John Strang very much, court heard, but because he thought he was dying, he said, okay, you can come and stay here. He told John Strang, call ahead before you come. But without doing so, Strang showed up on August 1st, just hours after shooting his wife. Now, Roland Larson is annoyed, but because, again, he thinks this is a terminal guy, he says you can stay, he shows him a cabin, and he leaves for an event he had. Now, Lynn is home watching movies when John comes to the door at 9 o'clock that night. He asks Lynn to go for a walk. She says, no thanks. She's watching movies with her grandkids, but she invites him in. Now he starts telling Lynn some very disturbing things, Jill. He told Lynn Larson he had fantasized about raping her, that he had thought about killing a lot of people, and because she'd haunted his thoughts, he'd start with her. But he says at some point that feeling has had passed. He then told Lynn Larson he'd done something bad already. Lynn said, hey, you've got a loving wife. He said, no, I've shot and killed her. Lynn Larson asked him why he'd done that, and John Strang said he didn't know. But he said no one would find out because they wouldn't find Lisa's body until after the long weekend as he'd taken both of the couple's dogs with him. Now, Lynn kept talking to John Strang until just before her husband was due home. Then John left, and he said, you're lucky your grandchildren were here. I wouldn't hurt a child. Stephanie, we also heard about a stockpile of weapons that John Strang had and some pretty other some other pretty scary items as well. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, he left the Larson house and he drove around for a while. He was arrested without incident about 24 hours after he let the Larsons. When he was found, his Jeep was stuffed, Jill, with guns, ammunition, nearly 1,100 rounds of ammunition. That's not including what was in the loaded weapons. There were knives, machetes, axes, and more than a dozen sets of handcuffs, including those used to hogtie a person. There was rope duct tape and gloves. How did the defense explain those guns, handcuffs, and all those other weapons you described? Well, the defense acknowledges this sounds like an alarming amount of guns, but he says not for an avid shooter, that John Strang went on an annual hunting, shooting trip, that he liked to fiddle around with handcuffs and use those to lock up his firearms and sometimes to tether his dogs. And so he says that this, for a firearms enthusiast, would be normal fare to have in your vehicle. What's next for Strang? Well, the judge will decide what happens to those guns on October 25th. John Strang wants to give them to a friend and some to his father. The Crown wants them all forfeited. And of course, he'll find out maybe what's more important to the family. That's what sentence he will get. He gets life for second degree murder, Jill. The question is how long before he can apply for parole. There's a joint request from the prosecution and the defense asking for 17 years before he can apply. But the judge made it clear to John Strang the final decision rests with her. She's not bound by that agreement and she'll tell him what it is October 25th. Thank you, Stephanie. You're welcome. The CBC's Stephanie Langenegger.